It is a, it is a huge task that you, uh, that you put on our shoulders if we need to uh, solve this problem. Um, I think that, uh, that as with all cultures uh, around us and the ones we are in it, it is one of the biggest problems uh, to deal with. And anyway, I think within a musical piece, you already have your own culture. And uh, I, if you look into musical history, you can see that you know the, the composer will expose the theme in the beginning of the piece, which is almost like setting the rules for that local culture at that moment. So there is, there is something extremely local uh, in our art anyway, that's, that's already deeply there. And, okay, I, uh, the microphone is falling. Um, this one. No, I can, I can try to hook it up again. I'm sorry to keep you waiting for this, but uh, it should hold for a little while. So I think that um, I, it, I would be extremely ambitious if I could solve the problem in its global um, meaning. I think that um, in a more local meaning, uh, you can create um, an instrument that indeed can um, respond very quickly to the needs by, uh, by of course, the, the interpretation of the musical meaning of the gesture. So you could make, you know, if you would work like in a kind of Stockhausen-like phrasing of like, you know, if I uh, make a very brief uh, analysis of it, uh, which is a bit too brief, uh, you could uh, add, um, sorry, the microphone is falling all the time, so we need more we have, we have a substitute microphone. Here. Yeah, okay, is this, I hope this microphone is working. So that means that if you would use that interface, you could actually use the triggers and then let them go through a little process that will always make those, you know, uh, increments and then so that you don't have to play that. And uh, I mean, this is a little bit of a joke, uh, the way I tell it now. But uh, what I mean to say is that um, the, the gestures um, could be interpreted in, in a really local and, and musical way according to the needs. And this is, again, you know, like if you take an oil drum, um, this week we were listening to a piece uh, by the MIA Ensemble, the former Martin Alton Ensemble, that used oil drums um, in a way that was very, I would say, almost like academic type of music style, very decently uh, played at the right moment. And, and at the same time, last week I was passing uh, through town and and there was a little Suriname band on the street playing the same type of oil drums. So I, I don't think that, that uh, the, the multicultural uh, aspect of it lies in the instrument. It's more like how it's being used. And so if I speak of the interpretation of gesture, suddenly I get way more technical. I'm only saying that, you know, I think sometimes right now we, you do it in a very simplistic way, like saying, oh, if my hands are close to each other, it's soft. And if they're going far away, it's getting louder. And I'm interested in what happens in between. And, and you know, like you, with a hand, you can, you know, you make this wave and, and it's still doing the same linear movement, but there's a lot more happening. And indeed, I am aware that if you would go further in this direction, you would say, okay, but then what does it mean if, my, if I open my hand? It is, could be a, a gesture of Jesus or is it, you know, begging for money? And, uh, uh, you know, I want money, or is it like I'm giving to you? So I'm, I'm aware that this is uh, uh, not so easy <laughs> to solve. And I believe in a very contextual solution. That is that you make a piece, like in the early days when the hands that I played, that instrument, uh, were not very known to an audience, I would start playing, indeed, because I have mapped the loudness uh, on this, this uh, scale, on this, this gesture, uh, amongst others, I would indeed start with my hands in front of me and start a sound and slowly, like via granular synthesis, uh, stretch the sound to more loudness. And then I would make little movements. And, and it was meant as, you know, kind of hypnosis is, and also, but also as an introduction of the idea that this gesture does something. So 
I was very well aware that if you play with a new instrument, you better explain yourself a little bit. And you can do that in a mimicked, musical and, and uh, abstract uh, way. So th it's very much about uh, creating a local context and hoping that you will reach out uh, to people. And as I said in the beginning of my answer, I think music has uh, quite a chance to bridge uh, those uh, you know, cultural gaps sometimes. <laughs> okay, Michel, we, we have a couple of more questions here. There's one uh, question written down, uh, which makes it um, definitely more understandable than the first one. It's from Lorenz from Köln. He asked if, um, if, there's a if there's a change or a general loss of virtuosity through individu individualization of electronic interfaces. Uh, I th I'm, I'm very happy with the question because it is, uh, I think, one of, uh, at time at least, and I know also a lot of other people are concerned about this. Um, for instance, the instrument that I'm playing, uh, consciously, the last six years, uh, we have not changed the, the, the technology. So I have uh, decided six years ago that I wanted an, a stable instrument and even though we have new uh, technologies available that would make certain things easier, I decided let's just keep it like this. It might be more difficult in some sense, but at the same time, I might be able to learn to play the instrument. And it's true that um, in the beginning of this talk, I've been mentioning the fact that we um, are looking for, for individual approaches, but what I'm preparing for the coming years is, is totally against Stein's earlier principles, is to, uh, to think, can we come up with an instrument or maybe a little family of four or five instruments and could we play at least for maybe two, three years with an ensemble with it and see what that means? So, so that some people would just play that little simple electronic uh, instrument for a longer time, play together, and, and, and the, the dogma would be, we're not going to change the technology, all we change is the way we put sounds in it, how we relate the sounds with the gesture, and how we play together. Yeah. And I think that, that answers your question in the sense that, uh, yes, I think we should freeze some technical developments for a while and let people play with instruments and indeed do experiments with um, uh, using the same instrument or you know, a variation on a few instruments. I hope this answers the question. Yeah. There's, um, there's a triple question by Jin Yun Kim, which referred to the first um, a part with the intentional space or intention space, which you described. And she asks, um, um, could you please explain more the technical and theoretical strategy of intention space theory and what is meant by intention exactly? Could one decipher intentions from gesture as if they could precede the acts of gest gesticulation? I don't know if I get this right, gesticulation. Yeah, yeah. But I think there's a couple of questions in it. Yeah. Can you answer to this um, briefly, please? Uh, yes, no, because, that's because there's one more question from Lüneburg, which yeah, I will. I will uh, promise you uh, uh, to um, that within maybe four years I have written this down. I'm to be honest, um, I can almost uh, um, not sympathize with you uh, asking me this question now because it is it is very difficult to I'm. I'm trying to write this down in a way, and it's, I'm already starting to work with, uh, with uh, people from other disciplines to work on this, because I totally uh, got trapped in the way of the language I was using, because it was not uh, very consequently dealing you know, with either the technical or the psychological aspects. The reason I wanted to get into is to, to try to uh, answer your question, is that I wanted to find a theory that that deals with the fact that somebody goes on stage with an idea of, you know, I want to play this piece of music, but there is much more to it. The reasons why people go on stage is, you know, they want to make money, or they want to impress friends, or they want to find new lovers, or they, you know, whatever. There, there, is, there is so many reasons why somebody uh, starts to perform, and they are totally left out of this uh, technical discussion. So this idea of intention, has to do with, you know, how could you find a way uh, to link the technology with, with what it's all about, that is like us as human beings in a, in a social, in this case, artistic situation. 
And um, as you can understand, and as you have correctly uh, pointed the, the question at me, uh, this is uh, the answer is very complex. And to be honest, uh, I'm getting somewhere, but I still have to learn to to formulate this in a way that it that indeed addresses this this whole combination of areas. And that is why I at the moment, uh, if we had done a whole interview about this, I, I could have started with the technology and shown um, you where the technology at least uh, doesn't cover our intentions anymore. And that would be, uh, 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 you know, that would take 10 minutes at least to start. And But I'll promise you that uh, as soon as there's any draft uh, around, uh, you'll be one of the first uh, to read this as a, as, thanks, a sign of gratefulness for your question. <laughs> so this was a wonderful excuse uh, for the fact that I haven't uh, been able to answer your question correctly. Um, Jin Yul Kim, do you have, no, did you want to respond to, to that? Okay, no. To the there was a Lüneburg chat. question. I think in Lüneburg there was another question, if I got it right. <laughs> if not, I um, like I would like to, to ask a very um, simple... I tried. Ah, hello Rolf, yeah, please. Ah, hello. Um, to uh, make the question by voice, but if it if it doesn't work, I, I will make it uh, via chat. <laughs> no, we hear it. We hear Are you it. understanding me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'd like to come back to the difference between your musical concept and the concept in the 19th century. Is this only a, a, a question of the level of freedom and the restrictions and op options of technology, or are there some more aspects? Um, I, my question goes to the exact difference between the music concept in the 19th century and here con concerning it. Thank you. Um, I my first uh, response is that um, the main difference is that um, I'd like to be uh, an independently operating musician in the sense that um, that I can not make music when I don't want to do it. I can choose uh, to make music for the people that I like to play for. And so we're not living in a situation where a chord or uh, a company, uh, in my case, is uh, is there is a funny ringing here. Do we? Yeah, need? let's no, let's just leave, ignore it. Okay, <laughs> good. Sorry, <laughs> somebody. Okay, yeah. um, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt this. So th the fact that um, since about the 70s, uh, I've been able, and, and I, I really answer it very subjectively, personally, um, it, that I, I really felt like I wanted to just make my music whenever I felt like making it. And I think that is a, a big difference with, uh, with you know, the general practice of the 19th century, although uh, a lot of that starts in that period. So the idea that also I refused to make, make CDs for a very long time, uh, this idea that I could um, you know, just play whatever I want, I don't have to play what was on the CD, or I don't have to do tours that my record company wants me to do, I've played with people like Laurie Anderson and other people that, that made their contracts and with, with companies not even that uh, stupid, they, they were very good at it, but still, you know, the, the whole company life was influencing their career in a matter that I wouldn't like it. And the reason I'm like that has to do with, with the fact that my father was very severe and I managed to, to escape that at a very young age, we're very good friends now. But uh, so I've learned that this escape possibility can bring a lot of creativity and independence. And I was part of a, of a really strong independent movement in music in, in various periods of my life. And um, I believe that is the deeper sense of democracy. And even though we live in times where democracy is threatened most maybe by people who have the word democracy in their mouth very often, uh, I, I really feel you have to show this uh, slightly anarchist uh, approach that I have. You know, I'm, I would call myself a social anarchist, which I think is a very Dutch, uh, crazy version of it. 
um, uh, I, I really believe that, um, that this independence issue is important. So to be able to carry your own instruments around, to develop them to your needs. STAM is very much like a safe house for people who, you know, sometimes we've had people at the, from the IRCOM or from other big institutions that couldn't do the work they really like to do and we said, well, you can come here. And so it is, it is this thing that I believe that creativity is a, is a thing that, that ripens in individuals that can isolate themselves from society and step back in society or have a, have a special link with society to other people. I think creativity doesn't come from big mass movements. It comes from small groups of people who dare to go into very uh, dangerous and different places and, and really discover maybe other world or discover themselves or discover things in our minds that, that people didn't dare to discover before. But it only works if this is in contact with a social um, group again. So, so this idea that, uh, for instance, in STEM, the model that I, I really try to implement is that you can let people work for a long time in the dark and in their own. If they want to be in the light, it's fine too. We can invite journalists, but it is not needed. Um, and then at some point we will ask them, okay, but now you have to come out with it. But for a few years they're allowed to really do exactly what they want. And I think with all the pressure of information, the scary politics of these days, it is very important that in arts we have the guts to, to really create places where people can find out who they are and, and really discover their creativity. So I know this answer stretches a bit far, but if you mention the romantic 19th century, you know that a, a kind of a religious uh, belief in thing is uh, maybe the, the thing that links the, the 19th century approach and maybe my personal views on this. I guess the, the question, I guess the question by Wolf Grossman uh, pointed more on your activity on stage directly, at the ex expression which you have on no, stage. Uh, no, I think, uh, I, I think that, uh, that one of the possible answers, and I thank you very much. Um, I have a second question, and I think um, it would be kind to have a, an explanation of the concept of music um, with an example, perhaps a crackle box, because uh, the crackle box is one instrument um, that shows very good um, what is the intention in making music. Um, well, then I can. I can give you a, a very special view on this um, because this one is rarely seen live. This is the, um, the crackle synth uh, that was built in the mid uh, 70s and it actually consists of uh, three uh, crackle boxes that you can see in this part here. I don't know if Nico can, yeah, if you zoom in. So there's three crackle boxes here. There is even a little keyboard, which was almost against my principles, but each key can be tuned and it can be switched on. It's totally battery operated, so you can travel around with it. To be honest, I was arrested with this instrument in the late 70s at the JFK airport with my sort of East European name and, uh, and this kind of spying device. Uh, you know, it was like now it was a bit of a funny period. So you can imagine the fun when uh, they said, oh, is that a musical instrument? Can you play for us? And then I would do... Um, <laughs> and, and they would say, is that music? So I'm, I'm very happy that you refer to it as music and, and, uh, and I will thank you for it by playing a little bit uh, and putting the microphone in the speaker.
Dr. Kleppen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Somebody's closed the window. <laughs> I think somebody has closed the window. I hope you can hear you can hear us still from Amsterdam, but um, we can't see our own image anymore. Um, I think somebody has closed it. Are we there? Well, we don't need to see ourselves. Ah, no, we are. Ah, there we are. Ah, we're, <laughs> we're here again. Okay. So it's almost time. Um, they say bravo from Bern. But not in the video anymore. Well, I, I want to um, let you know that uh, if ever you come to Amsterdam, um, let me know, let us know, or Andreas, we have a guest house, and you're totally welcome to come and look around, or maybe propose a project. And uh, I will actually be performing in Switzerland uh, on the 2nd of... Um, uh, yes, sound on sorry, sorry, sorry. In Amsterdam. Is it on now? Now it must be on. Sorry, I forgot to push the button. Okay. <laughs> Is it on now? Can somebody wait? Is it on? Can I speak? Okay. Uh, so what I was saying, I, I want to thank you also for your attention and let you know that uh, if ever you come to Amsterdam, Stam has a guest house. If you let me know or via Andreas beforehand, uh, we can reserve for you and we'll be happy to listen to what you want to know and we can show you around. And if you have projects uh, to propose, it would be great. And um, it's it's uh, it's very special to see each other in these like really flimsy little sh stuttering images. It's very unmusical, but I, we have managed by words and other ways to to reach each other a little bit. But um, uh, if you uh, some of you are in Switzerland, I will be performing uh, with two German musicians, uh, Paul Hübweber and Uli Butcher, in Lugano. Uh, Saturday the 2nd of uh, December. I mean, it's not too close to Bern, I know. But um, anyway, we, I hope we meet uh, each other in, in real life, uh, in real space and with real music right in the same space as soon as possible. <laughs> Thank you. Michel, perhaps you can also um, uh, say a small invitation about my, uh, Micro Jamboree, which will take place at Stein, because Cologne and Osnabrück are two cities which are nearby, and I think it may be interesting for some students to come here, if you can briefly say what's happening during these four days. Yeah, so uh, that is in, in December, um, I, the, the 13th or 14th, so it's 12, 11, uh, if, if it's Monday, 11? It, 11 to 14. Okay, 11 to 14. Uh, it's a little meeting that we call this time Micro Jamboree. It's really meant for people who work uh, with uh, Lisa and Junction software, but also who work with uh, hardware uh, interfaces. Uh, there are several meetings actually, and there's two evenings with concerts. And you will be able to find the information probably next week on our website. There is a limited uh, amount of places available uh, for for visitors or for listeners, but of course it's not a, it's still a bit of a round table, so you can be um, in it. Uh, if you want to um, come and be a part of this, uh, you can contact Stein to knock at Stein, K-N-O-C-K at Stein.nl. You find it on the website and you send a mail that you would like to attend and you come on the waiting list and we'll try to get you in. Especially also mention you were part of this uh, conference uh, that we have now. And uh, the concert evenings are on the 13th and 14th. And on the 14th we have in concert Atao Tanaka and also Taku or DJ Sniff who is working at Stein at the moment already. And uh, Mazen Kerbach from Beirut. And uh, the three of them will be the artistic uh, directors for Stein the next year and maybe longer. So it's also a way to, uh, to uh, meet the people who will run the artistic uh, side of Stein because Stein wouldn't have been there if I would have run it all the time. We've always had very good artistic directors who gave new directions and brought new people. 
so it's a direct way to get to know them as long as you maybe already doesn't don't know them and there's going to be other concerts on the day before and well maybe we see each other there and I think on Tuesday you have a special presentation of all kinds of sensor and sensor interfaces is it right Robert said so yes Taco has invited sort of the some of the major players in in bringing out small sensor boards or so data collection boards and they will actually meet for the first time because they sometimes also are in a concurrent commercial situation and so it is very good that he managed to get these people together so we because some of the boards are so much alike so we thought maybe to have a discussion where we can look at the future and how we can collaborate or maybe what's missing or you know things like that thank you very much Michel thanks for the interview well thank you too okay let's wave to the camera see you soon I like those I'd like to thank you too. And we talked uh, um, with Bernd Ennert and Michael Hahnberg uh, um, at, uh, before some hours. So we try to make uh, a little meeting, perhaps in Amsterdam. That would be very fine to see you yes. <laughs> personally and to talk with you. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. That's good. I'll oh, just, just close this thing. I'll leave it open. Thank you. Thank you. It's always funny when you use <laughs> the first web page. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello world, everybody. <laughs> Okay. Whew, that was really, uh, in the beginning I was 